We're back here on Liquid Lunch. Uh, we got, uh, hey, we got, uh, hey, I got a Valentine. Yeah, so did I from <laughs> Stacy. <laughs> Thank you, Stacy. You're very welcome. So far, this is the only Valentine I've received. Really? Yep. But I was telling Jeanette uh, before, I used to be Cupid. You used in to be high Cupid? School. Really? I was Cupid, yeah. You were that guy giving cards to all I the girls? I was the guy. Was well, I mean, on behalf, it was like an agent for all the other guys, <laughs> right? Mm. Anyways, the thing but we I had. brought you Valentine stuff today, too. You've been eating it. Yes, yes I but did. you didn't actually give me a Valentine. Oh, wow. I'm not so complaining. Funny. I'm not complaining. I'm very you didn't grateful. Give me one either. That's right. <laughs> okay. okay. Can I hear more about your date? <laughs> okay. Dates. Dates. Plural. Well, that's what we're here when it's to Jeanette, it's all about the plural. <laughs> <laughs> you know my mother watches the show. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> so Sorry, mom. She's gonna get the wrong thing. I idea. hate to break it to you, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Not at all. <laughs> Um, anyway, Stacey. we're here with Stacy. You're Inca, a relationship right? coach Inca. and matchmaker. Ica. Ica. And she, right? yeah, yes. she's a relationship and, and matchmaker online and offline. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. Sure. It's Valentine's Day. There's a lot of single people out there. Yes, there are. Um, what are some of the mistakes they're making in the dating process, either online or offline or both? Okay, that is a very loaded question. Yes, it um, is. I think but mistakes. I want to spark some debate here. I really want to deflect and hear about your dates. Uh, um, I think mistakes is a strong word, but the the biggest trend that I'm noticing is that single people are having difficulty relating to one another when it's with the opposite sex. So um, that can mean how they communicate with each other, how they interact with each other on person, how they target their audience online. But it's how we're relating to each other that I think is really at the crux of what it is that we're doing wrong, for lack of a better word. Okay. Okay. Uh, what should they do better? <laughs> you know, I mean, why is that happening? Is it um, the internet the barrier, or is it just guys are just not being properly socialized to deal with women, or vice versa, or are the sex roles changing, or? I think it's a combination of all of them. I, you know, often, especially being a female and having um, a large percentage of my client base being female, I hear about all the things men are doing wrong. Right. In fairness, I think that as women, we're also there's all there's always opportunities for improvement. So to answer your question, I think it's a combination of factors. There's a lot of variables at play, but having the advent of technology, it's certainly complicated what's already been a very difficult interaction. And I think that as the sex and the gender roles are changing, men more often than women don't necessarily understand the role that they're expected to play. That's true because yeah, there used to be like a set. This is how you act. Right. And then those those tradition started to erode yes and now it's a complete free-for-all nobody knows what's what anymore right and especially for guys I think it's harder for guys I do too because I think in the old days it was like it was a guy's world right, right. And but now, I think we as women liked that yeah but now it's a women's world and so when you pull, when <laughs> it's you pull true. <laughs> no somebody told me actually one of our guys he said like he they get discriminated against in the market in the job market because they're guys everybody wants to hire women hmm, I haven't true. experienced that yet and I do come from the corporate sector but that very may, may very well be the case I just haven't it hasn't been my experience yeah, okay. but I do th I do have a lot of sympathy for men in the dating world and I do think that they have a tougher time of it so with the oh. with the evolution of the the feminist movement and women becoming more empowered not only in their careers but in their personal lives I think it's really difficult for men to understand what they want and I think as women we don't always do a good job of telling them what it is that we want and what we need and saying that some I know some women a yes. lot of women who are single and they complain to me that they don't want to have to tell the man they want the man to know so what do you say to that I, You're a coach, right? So, so let's deal with it in terms of coaching terms. How do you coach a man and a woman to go out, find a date, present themselves online in order to have the opportunity to really find a perfect mate? It's a great question. And the first thing that I do, whether it's a man or a woman, my approach at the beginning is the same. So the first thing that I do is I make sure that I and the client understand who they are. Okay, so if they don't know who they are, how can they possibly expect to market themselves adequately to the opposite sex or to the same sex, depending on who it is that they're trying to attract? The other thing that I work with them on is managing their own expectations. And the better able they are to manage their own expectations, they can set those expectations properly in the context of a relationship. And so they, have, they don't have to as often tell the person what it is that they're looking for. But I think you know, if, a, if someone is bemoaning the fact that they have to tell their partner or the people that are courting them what they need, I would say to them, suck it up. 
um, you, there has to be a little bit of guidance in any relationship and in any courtship. Now, what happens when you do express what you need right. and they're not listening or they're not responding? What happens there? Is this just a sign that this is not the right mate for you? This is going back to what I started talk, what Hugh and I were talking about at the beginning is in how we relate to each other. This is where I do the most, where I spend the most amount of my coaching time with clients is how they're communicating what they need. It's one thing to say, I want this, I need this, but it, how you're presenting it is going to determine how the other person is receiving the message. So the business sitting in the tree yes. is, is not just about matchmaking, although you do traditional matchmaking, yes, I do. you also do relationship coaching. Yes. What's the online component? Do you actually manage, uh, the reason I'm asking you this is, I know I'm busy, a lot of other professionals are very, very busy, and, she wants uh, to get busier. No, just hold on. Let me ask my question. Let You're such a tease. I want to know the story I know, here. He just doesn't leave me alone. Um, listen, Cupid. <laughs> Let me ask my question here. My question is, a lot of professional people or busy people who are serious about finding a, a mate do not have the time to sit online because there's a process to it where sure. you're, you know, you're hunting or you're looking up the p profiles and then you've got to do some research and then there's a, several email exchanges just to get to that, maybe right. that first date for coffee. Um, and there's a lot of bantering back and forth. It takes a lot of time. Do you do that for your clients? I do. do. You, so how does that work? So it's, it's a bit of a hybrid service that I offer, and it's, it's a hybrid between my online dating profile makeover service and traditional matchmaking. So everything that I do is customized. The first thing that I do is what I call an intake session or a consultation, and I assess where that person is in their dating process because everybody's in a different place, and wherever you are, I can start with you there. And if we decide together that the best approach and what it is that you need from me is to help you with your online dating, then I go on, I do the screening process based on what you and I have discussed is the right person or the right target audience for you, to use your, your marketing terms. Yeah, because I think it's all about marketing. It is dating marketing. and marketing, it's the same thing. Of course you it is. Just, it you know, is. For people, unlike you're yourself, who don't come from a marketing background, they don't often like to think of themselves as a product. But you're right, it is a marketing it's, game. And it's all personal branding. Or, yeah. or, or in Jeanette's case, a magnet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because there was a book written about this. About I thought you say there was a book dating, written about you. And, uh, <laughs> Not yet. I wrote my own book. But <laughs> no, seriously, there's a very well-known book about this, uh, written by a, a girl named Rachel. I can't remember her last name, but uh, it was, she's an MBA from Harvard, and she compared the whole dating process yes. to marketing and I think it's selling Greenwald. yourself. Rachel Greenwald. I think. Yes, Greenwald. Yeah, okay. Excellent. So um, the thing is, I would like to know, you know, um, like what's your take on these rules and, and what maybe what you should be writing and should not be writing online? Is What's the dangers? What's the pitfalls? Go she ahead. needs to know. There, yeah. were, there were like five <laughs> questions in there. I'm going to kill you, I swear. <laughs>